Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Okay, so I want to start out by first saying thank you so much for being my guest on the podcast and introduce you and then ask you to talk a little bit about your background. So this is my new friend, my virtual friend. I have to say this is the first time that I've done this type of podcast. So I just appreciate you doing this with me because I feel like we're trying it out together. So this is Christine. Um, Will you tell us just a little bit about your background and why you chose to go into the type of career that you have now? Talk a little bit about that because I think it's really powerful. Well, Heidi, first of all, thank you for having me. Love your platform and what you're doing for other women and just resonates with me so powerfully. And also thank you for allowing me to be your guinea pig yes. in this virtual environment. Thank you it's for a lot doing of fun. <laughs> <laughs> So real briefly, you know, I started off my career in the promotional services space, um, working primarily with Fortune 500, 100 companies um, and it kind of segued into the tech space. And what I found over the course of my corporate career, it was really kind of mind-blowing for me just in terms of the, the feelings that women were feeling as it relates to financial due diligence, negotiating better income you know, and, and compensation packages from the, for themselves, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of kind of negative self-talk, or maybe just not knowing where to begin. Mm-hmm. And it was very powerful for me because of my own personal background. I decided to pivot into the financial services space because I wanted to make an impact in women's lives, Um, primarily because I watched firsthand what it was like to grow up with a mother who was an immigrant from another country where English was a second language. And unfortunately, she found herself in a very volatile marriage. And so she didn't have money or resources of her own. And we saw, my sister and I growing up, the, the distress of the lack of resources primarily financial resources for my mom to be able to have choices Mm -hmm. in her life. And, you know, so for me, it's super important to help empower women through education and and financial advising to kind of get them to that empowered place. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really amazing point. And one of the things that I wanted to ask you, and I know you had put together a piece on this that we can attach um, to the website and the podcast so people can download it. But what do you see with women, specifically moms, that you think are those kind of first steps? Because I think that the way that you articulated that in overwhelm is usually what I see. And um, I actually looked up a statistic, and I don't know how accurate this is, but that 66% 66, of men have a financial plan. They're investing. And it's less than 40% of women. And that's today. Right. So I can't even imagine what it was back when you're when you were younger and your mom was in the place that she was. But I think today, even for that number to be as low as it is, was kind of shocking to me. So what would you suggest as, you know, a young mom of children is listening to this? What would you suggest to to take those first steps? I mean, I and, you know, thank you for sharing those statistics, you know, because they're very relevant. And what's, what's interesting is that two-thirds of the wealth in this country are held by women. So talk about a disconnect there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think for young moms just starting out, it's super important to, to start getting educated. Listen, you know, we're time pressed. So I understand, you know, it's not something that we have the resources or the time to do full time, but Google books that really resonate with you maybe books specifically cater to women, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and start understanding some of the financial, I guess you might say foundational steps that you can take right off the bat. Everyone's situation is different, but I think getting a better understanding of how much cash liquidity that you should have based on your lifestyle and, and your monthly burn rate, you know, some of the things that you might need to do to just make sure that your family or loved ones are protected. Um, and then 
thinking about what are some ways to start to drive sources of income if that's important to you, right? So there's no one size fits all approach, but I would say maybe one of the first things to do is to start looking at even online platforms like Elvest. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a book, great book out there. You know, I think it's called uh, Smart Women Finish Rich. There's so many great financial gurus. So find an author or something that really resonates with you. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of great starting points, you know, in terms of how best to approach this. How do you how do you help women to get more comfortable with it? Because you you mentioned this, and I I definitely see it. It's almost like they're fear, they're fearful because they don't and they don't even know what they're fearful of, honestly, right? Um, sometimes it's the language. Sometimes it's the way maybe someone has spoken to them about investing in the past, and it made them feel maybe not you know great about the way that it was <laughs> talked to them. Um, but how do you how do you help them to become more comfortable? Is it that? Is it going and doing some of their own research? Is it talking to someone like you, talking to friends? What what suggestions do you usually make for? women that are in that place where they're thinking, maybe I should, I don't know, how do I do it? I don't know, maybe I don't want to. Such a great question. Look, you know, that is, that's just a great starting point. Maybe just start to do some reading and a little bit of research to just start to kind of feel a little bit more comfortable with the idea of it. Mm -hmm. But I would highly encourage and recommend women to speak to a financial expert, right? and actually speak to multiple financial experts. It's like dating, <laughs> you know? It really is. Most financial advisors out there, you know, there's different ways in terms of how they approach financial planning, investing. And, re- and remember, a, a sound financial plan isn't just investments, right? It's, mm-hmm. you know, a holistic plan is super important, but everyone's at different stages of their life, have different priorities and goals. So I think one of the things to do is to just kind of get yourself to the point where you're like, hey, I'm going to start asking friends or people that I trust for a good financial advisor or financial expert to speak to. And most of them, right, will start off with just having a discovery conversation to see if, you know, they can be helpful to you, if there's an alignment in personalities, you know, Mm -hmm. if that person in terms of their philosophy feels right to you, how they speak with you is aligned. For me personally, when I have an initial conversation with a potential client, it's really, we spend about an hour just getting to know each other. And I explain to them, right, my philosophy and my approach to planning. And especially with women, I let them know right off the bat, you know, we can't blame ourselves for what we don't know. I mean, we can't hold judgment against ourselves for that. And it can be overwhelming. And you might've had some really bad experiences in the past or talked down to or whatever it may be. But let's start off, it's an open slate. My job is to educate and empower you and let you know that I'm here with you every step of the way. And, and my job is to educate you, you know, and provide you with the tools that's going to be most beneficial to you. Yeah. So that's what I would encourage. So let's go a little bit of a different direction. And as a working mom who is very successful and has children, let's talk a little bit about how you balance that. So talk about professional women, motherhood. How do you merge the two? I, I, I find that with every woman, there's a little bit of a different balance or a little bit of a different dance that happens there. So talk about for you how you manage that. That is a great question. And in all honesty, Heidi, I'm still trying to figure it out. And my kids are 16 and 17. Like, I don't, I do not have a foolproof system for this. I <laughs> love all. that you admitted that, right. though. Because life is not perfect. And sometimes curveballs come, come at us right out of the blue that we didn't anticipate, you know. I think the one thing that I, I, I hold very, very firm to this is that because I need to make an income, right? I am an income earner. I'm, I'm head of household. My business hours have to be focused on business hours. Yeah. You know, I've got to be able to, to focus on time, which allows me to be productive in that area to the best of my ability, but to give myself some grace if a child, if my child is sick or, you know, needs to go to the pediatrician or whatever it may be. Like, you know, I also am very, very firm about allocating certain amount of time for my kids. Like there's a certain point in the evenings, right? If I, especially if I'm not on business travel where the computer is shut off, we're having dinner together, 
we're actually engaging and making eye contact and conversation. And again, I have teenagers. I was so going to say know. teenagers? They don't eye contact? That at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying they love it. I do. But, <laughs> like, yeah. but this is important and precious to me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, at least one day on the weekend, right? Where we're doing, we're having quality time together, you know? So that's, for me, it's it's more of like, I, I've, I've, as life evolves, I try to find a rhythm, right? Which mm -hmm. allows me to at least allocate dedicated focus time in those areas, but no system, you know, for yeah. me. I, I haven't been able to find that secret sauce. So if you have a mom in your network that has it, I would love to speak with her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think you hit on it, right? I, I've obviously asked this of so many women, and I feel like everybody has a different life. Everybody has different children and different things that are pulling on them, and whatever that cadence of that looks like for you, but that grace to give yourself the grace to be okay that none of us are perfect, and anyone that looks like they're perfect, it's a lie. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so. Well, and to your point, Perfection is such a, it's a heartbreaking thing to strive for. Yes. You know, we are already perfect as we are today in this moment. Mm -hmm. And that could be our kids are crying in the corner and, you know, we have a boss that's, you know, like hounding us for, for a late project. The moment is it, we are, we have to give ourselves grace that we can only do the best that we can. And quite frankly, most of us as working moms, we're doing a lot. Yes. We're doing a lot. So, yeah. So I asked this of all my guests, so you know this is coming. Do you remember when you hit six figures and what that felt like for you? Oh, yeah. No, I I was 29 years old. And I basically, I, I, it was the first startup company that I joined in the promotion services space. And I remember there were two things that I wanted to achieve before 30. I wanted a certain title. I wanted a VP title at this organization. I would be the first woman to obtain it. And I also wanted to hit six figures. Um, and, and I did that before 30. And you know what? I, it, was, it was an interesting moment because it was, I, I would say, the feeling of just, it was a, an accomplishment on a level that was so fulfilling for me because it was something, you know, of generations of women on my mom's side of the family. I mean, my mom grew up in poverty, you know, in Taiwan. My grandmother too. My, my, nobody on my mom's side of the family went to college. So I was the first, right, to be able to graduate from college. And I was the first to get to a certain level. And I just remember the, of course, it was wonderful to have my family say, we're proud of you. Like, what, it's, what an accomplishment. But for me to say to myself, you know, this is something I wanted. And I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it for me, you know. Yeah. And but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, and be proud of yourself. I was very proud of myself, too. But I also, I'll, I'll tell you, on the other side of that accomplishment, I realized that, you know, although it feels good, right, to hit a milestone or something or goal that you set for yourself, I think there's a certain level of just kind of going, this feels great. But I'm, I'm growing as a person. I'm continuing mm -hmm. to evolve. So what is next for me, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. it may not be the financial piece anymore. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it's, you know, I found that over the course of my career, I really wanted to start to dedicate my efforts towards m companies and business models and eventually, you know, uh, uh, the financial services space where it was like utilizing my time to really impact others in a great way. Like I made my first six figures selling promotional um, incentives to help sell more consumer packaged goods products, mm -hmm. you know, which was great, but I really wanted to get to a point now where it was like, all right, where am I dedicating my efforts? Because I want to really make more of an impact in people's lives, not just making sure their whites are whiter, <laughs> you know, and selling more bleach. So, you know, so that, that kind of in a nutshell was just, but that was a very pivotal point. It was. So that leads me to the next question that I have and something that I hope you'll dive into a little bit. You touched on this, that your mother was an immigrant and um, you definitely, when you and I have spoken, have gone into this area. It It's what sets your heart on fire. So will you talk a little bit about giving back to women in that way? Because the the sense that I get from you is, 
you watched your grandmother, you watched your mother, and you watched your mother struggle in a lot of ways. And you now have this ability to empower women in something that you are very, very gifted at and very strong in um, because of everything that you watched in your childhood. So will you talk a little bit about why you are doing this? Because I think for me, that was the thing that resonated the most with me when you were talking about why you went into financial services. Sure. And thank you for allowing me to share that. You know, it's it's my why, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you know, at a very early age, because I spoke English, I was the mouthpiece for my mom. Mm-hmm. You know, we went into a, a bank because she needed to withdraw some money just to buy groceries. But, you know, here I am. I'm, I'm literally a little girl speaking on her behalf because English was a second language. I saw the frustration and maybe even the shame that she felt not being able to do this on her own. And that was very powerful for me, right, as a little girl. Um, And I think the ability, by default, the ability to actually interact with grownups at that age, um, you know, probably got me to a place where I, you know, communication skills were developed early on, a sense of self-confidence, because I wanted to protect my mom. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be there for her and take care of her. I wanted to take away those frustrated feelings, that feeling of shame that she couldn't do this on her own, right? And so that really resonates for me. I want to do this for other women. I want to help take the overwhelm out of it. I want to help demystify what it means to be financially secure, financially independent, you know, financial freedom, however women want to define that. Um, and, And I noticed that, you know, over the course of time, mom's English got better. Eventually, she ended up getting a job. It was a it was a, an hourly you know wage. But as she was starting to step by step implement more independent actions in her life, it gave her more strength and courage in other areas. She used her voice more. My mom was very timid, right, when she was first married to my dad, and was basically he controlled the relationship and watching that evolution happen. Um, you know, I talk about kind of, you know, the, the, there's five things that are so important that, you know, we women need to, to, to really invest in and fight for, you know, but you find that in, as you start to kind of grow in one area, you know, whether it's, you know, I'm, I'm exercising my voice more, I'm starting to take steps towards some financial independence. You start to see like a shift happen in these different areas of our lives. And we become so much more confident because we realize we're, 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 we're able to now make choices and live a life by design and not by default. Mm-hmm. And this is what I want to do for other women because I think we all need wing women. We need a wing woman, you know? We all need kind of our support network. That's, you know, and all boats rise with the tide. So, so this is why I do this. I love that. Um, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna put that on a quote for you wing women. <laughs> 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 so true. Right. Okay. Make it more fun. You know, you got to grow back in you. You know, you got somebody there for you. I love that, right? It's just, you know, you've got somebody who's part of your core group of, of, of women that support, love, care about you, and they've got you back. Yeah. Well, I've told you a little bit about our demographic, but we have women that are aspiring to six figures, and then we have women that are in that place and listen to this podcast. So in that vein, what have I not asked you that you think could be of benefit to our listeners? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would say, if I may, I'm going to answer kind of a two part. Yes. I think there are, you know, when I talk about, and, and it's really going to be focused more on maybe say financial independence, mm-hmm. right? When I talk about kind of financial due diligence, financial preparation, sometimes a lot of people are thinking, okay, what investment should I be in? How should I be deploying money because I want retirement to look like this? I get that. And that's always part of kind of more of the long game conversation. But I say for women who are just starting off in their careers, oftentimes we don't come into our kind of like the workspace, right? Whether we've started a new job or we're just, our careers are just launching and we don't necessarily have the experience or the confidence to negotiate for what we're worth. It is so important. This is one half of the financial independence equation. This is one one side of the equal sign, right? 
And I think that that's super important, you know, speaking with a coach or a mentor, making sure that you are getting, you know, at bare minimum, your market value, mm -hmm. right, for the role that you're in, if not more so, because I'm gonna tell you why it's so important, and this is just oversimplifying it, because on the other side of the equation, when we're thinking about deploying dollars towards future goals, right, buying a house, saving for our kids' college education, retirement, if we start off with less, we have less to deploy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the beautiful thing of time and compounding, right, is that the more that you can allocate towards these different goals, different buckets, right, right you've got time on your side, but if you're not negotiating what you're worth, you're, you've got less to start off with. And so I feel that it's super important for, for women kind of starting off in their careers, like we've got to exercise that confidence muscle, you know, and again, working with mentors, coaches, et cetera, if that's helpful to you, I highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah, that's really powerful. Okay, so book or podcast or both, <laughs> but, but which one do you prefer? And is there one that you would recommend? Book or podcast or both. I mean, I love both. You know, here's the beauty of when you're stuck in traffic in Southern California, it's awesome to listen to podcasts. And I listen to so many, but I would just say yours is one yours is wonderful, Heidi. So resonates with me. I mean, I enjoy podcasts primarily. They're women, women in business, you know, and women empowering other women. So I love to listen to those types of podcasts. Um, and in terms of books, I will tell you, you know, I'm right now. I'm kind of in a little bit of a detachment phase, right? So during my downtime now, I'm actually reading a book more kind of working on my spiritual development. Um, and I'm on book three of Conversations with God. That's Neil awesome. Donald Walsh, yeah. So, um, and it's, it's, it, it helps us, for me, it helps me to kind of realign my mindset mm -hmm. outside of a lot of the things that we get caught up with in our lives that make us so reactive. Yes. Right. And so it helps me kind of detach and realize that we are creating our lives. We are actually creators of our day, our future. And so we have so much power. You know, we should feel good about that. Isn't that true? I love yeah. that. Um, one of the quotes, and I'm, I never say quotes perfectly because I love quotes. I've got, you know, so many of them, but the person that owns their hour, owns their day, owns their week, owns their month, owns their life, something along those lines is, it's so true. So thank you for that. And thank you for doing this with me. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for sharing your story. And um, as I mentioned before, Christine did do a downloadable kind of points that we will put along with this podcast. So thank you for doing that. And and I really appreciate it. We should do another one of these that's a little bit more in depth on the financial side in the future, so. Uh -huh. I would love that. Super excited to be helpful in that regard. And Heidi, thank you for having me. Yes. And allowing me to share my story with your listeners. If it's just, if, it's, it's, if it helps to inspire them to just let them know that, you know, ladies, you got it. It's in you, right? And, um, in, you can create the life that you want, right? So it's it's totally in your it's totally in your hands. Thank so you. thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.